Hey everybody, it's Norm from Test Hit, and I am in this futuristic office park that also turns out to be the headquarters for Amazon. And in one of these office buildings here is the headquarters for AWS Deep Racer. That's the platform for their autonomous race car system that they developed to teach developers about machine learning and reinforcement learning. And they just announced the new Deep Racer Evo system as well as upgrades to the software platform. I'm gonna chance to check both of those out right now. Let's go take a look. All right, so I'm really excited to be checking out Deep Racer here with Sahika, Senior Applied Scientist on the project. Uh, this is the racer. Uh, tell me about how this was designed. Uh, it was designed as part of a process that we would like to teach machine learning uh, to people out there who are interested and would like to really put the uh, hands-on experience for them. What we were really trying to figure out though was how we can create an educational content around it and that we can apply it hands-on using a vehicle. So a vehicle was the essential core uh, for us to make the connection between what you're coding versus what you're observing. It's a totally a hands-on product that really physicalizes all of that modeling that, that can be done with machine learning. So uh, not only is it, of course, a short car, you've designed the idea to be a race, right? This needs to drive autonomously on a track. Um, tell me about the just kind of the parameters of that. How is this, what are, what are your users configuring here what input do you get from the sensors and what are they tweaking uh, to have it run autonomously? Uh, so in the, in the console, there are many things that you can um, adjust. And one of the things that we were hearing from academia and from our uh, developers along was, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> so it's one of the uh, important and most critical parts is the reward function. So users today can change the reward function and they can uh, get parameters from the simulation, such as the speed, the steering, and is a turn coming up, and also things like, am I going, uh, am I staying within the track, mm -hmm. uh, within the white lines, am I steering off to the left of the yellow line, and things like that. So all those are exposed, and then you can design your own reward function with less than 20 lines. <laughs> right, right, like the idea is that there's not only, you have one camera here, there's computer vision, so it's seeing you know, and analyzing the scene on a frame-by-frame -frame basis, but there's also telemetry, right? You're talking about its own speed, its own where the wheels are turned, and that's all simulated in a virtual environment. Exactly, and the other key component of it when we were moving to the device was uh, to have the inference fast enough. So this is where the racing comes into the picture, and this is what we see in the industry, people working in the field are really interested in making the machine learning work in the real world really requires you to move fast. Right. So one thing that we did was we use um, an optimizer. So when the neural network is making inferences frame by frame, uh, it's actually putting in an optimizer on the neural network to make those decisions fast so that it can actually act as quickly as possible. We use Intel Open Window to do that. Can we take a look under the hood here? Sure. Yeah, to see how, how this whole thing, the whole thing's designed. Yeah. And obviously it's very uh, inspired by just a scale model car. You have you know, your rubber wheels, um, but it's really a, it's a computer system here. Yeah, exactly. So the actually what you see here is that the top of the car is um, our compute environment, but the bottom here is very, uh, low cost, we mm. actually experimented with different scales. And what we really found out is that we want to go smaller for the racing experience. Uh, but we also would like to give the opportunity for people to try different tracks. That's why we have rubber. So you can use carpet, you can use floor. <laughs> so if you're racing your opponents in the office, that it is ready to go. And um, as versatile as you can get it, there's so many variables in the, the physics of the real world. Yeah. You know, the, the friction of the track, the reflectivity of the material, all of that needs to be kind of accounted for. Yeah, it's actually funny that you mentioned that even the springs that you will see. Oh, okay, suspension. Here, yeah. yeah, the suspension. So in our earlier models, one of our cars came with a different suspension and we were testing and the car started bobbing. And I'm like, this car is so excited to be on the track. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it just had the wrong springs. And then we were thinking, why it's not transferring properly? So you really need to get a high fidelity simulation environment. So we 
currently model the steering. So you would see that in our console, we expose 30 degrees as max. That's because what the vehicle can do. Um, I can also take this off and I can show you. Yeah, let's look at that computer system. Can I see a heat sink there? It's, it's running compute. It's obviously processing the visuals yeah. from the single camera system. You get a live view as well on, on your control panel, uh, but you're only adjusting speed there. This is like truly yes. as autonomous as, as can be. Yes, yeah, so it's actually uh, learning both steering and the speed. So we wanted to give the opportunity for the racers to fine tune their cars. Mm. So they can calibrate it the way they want it based on their model. And they can calibrate it such that they can decide to go a little slower on the curves. I and mean, that's a big difference between that virtual environment and the real world. Exactly. Right? Like every car through many laps mm -hmm. will change. There'll be wear on just you know the, all the, the actual physical hardware. Yeah. And, and that is that shows how robust, I guess, the model. Yeah, is. yeah. So we create a lot of um, very we actually inject noise in the simulation environment. So um, what we do is we inject noise when the steering and speed signals are sent uh, that accommodates for some of the, the variation in the mechanical components. So neural network in the simulation learns to deal with some of those to create robustness when, it, when we move from the simulation to real world. There is a funny story about this heat sink that we didn't have a really big heat sink initially. And then uh, our next generation cars, when we were developing, heat sink came and it turned out that it was really heavy and none of our models were working. So we had to go back and change the mass. So mass, friction, Newtonian physics do really matter. I mean, the battery really itself, matter. right? That's a lot of mass as well. And it's something that you know, electric vehicles and autonomous cars will have to contend with because at the scale, it is a big portion. It is, of it. it is. Um, but you do have the sensor. It is this camera. Uh, you chose this one for, you know, obviously for, for cost, but also, again, to test the robustness of the system. It didn't need to be ultra-wide, ultra-high fidelity. Actually, some of those limitations help the models show that they're, how, how capable they are. Yes, it is. Actually, we reduced the uh, resolution on the camera when we are learning. So we were thinking, like, we were going to do... Uh, 64, 48. Mm -hmm. um, but what happened is we could get by by just doing 160 by 120. Pixels. Pixels. And we actually do gray scales. It turns out that they are more robust to the changes in the texture. And uh, we used convolutional neural networks, so it really picks up what matters on the image even with the lower resolution. That's very cool. And obviously, this platform was, was used for this first season of the Deep Razor Challenge. Uh, but what you're announcing at reInvent is an upgrade to this. Can we take a look at the upgrade? Yes, definitely. Sahika, so tell me about this. We have a new experience coming up. We have a preview at reInvent. And um, what we are planning is that um, you're going to now have the option to add more sensors to your car. And we think this is really critical because um, one of the important things that we learn from our developers is they usually have to work with various uh, types of sensors. And these types of sensors change in inputs uh, as well. This was literally, we saw people out there trying to race multiple deep racers on the track. And we're like, this looks really fun. Maybe we should, <laughs> maybe we should try it. As it turned out, the theory of it is really, really difficult. And the literature on this topic is uh, really catching up as more and more systems are coming out where you need to coordinate um, many different components, and you have this multitude of sensors with different modalities. So we thought this is really a big challenge that was really fun to work with and make it happen. I mean, it does really sound like a challenge because even though you're adding second camera, LIDAR, it's orders of magnitudes complex because all that sensor fusion is then something that needs to be accounted for in the model um, on, again, like a frame-by-frame -frame basis, but it's what the people wanted. It's They were already putting these deep racers next to each other. And so this allows you to go head to head? Yes, basically it does. Um, by two cameras, we allow the car to have a depth perception. And that means that uh, when you're doing a head to head race with another car, it enables you to see how far you are from the other car and you can navigate through. So it's just that raw data, the models will train, they'll understand that you now have near field awareness so that it's not just looking at the contrast of the lines, kind of staying within the lines as the most basic task, but 
other moving objects. Now, yes. moving obstacles are one thing, and I know Stereo lets you kind of navigate around obstacles, but moving obstacles, other deep racers, that seems to be very complex. Yes, it is very complicated because you have to account for um, maybe people at the Navy will not know this better when you have two battleships and they have to really predict where the other battleship is going to be in order to make their maneuver. So it is very similar. Now, when the other car is moving, um, the, the car has to learn that it's going to be at a certain trajectory and that it will try to avoid that trajectory. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we figured out very quickly that we can do these maneuvers and predict what the car is, the opponent car is uh, moving using a stereo camera. But then we started seeing lots of crashes and then we analyzed why these crashes were happening because you see the car in front of you, you're going really fast and you steer it. But as it turned out that we have a multi-objective reward function that even the car is passing the moving car it's coming out of the corner. So it really needs to slow down. The blind spot. Yeah. Exactly. So what we realized is that the car actually needs to look back in order to decide that, oh, there's a car coming behind me and it's another racer. It's a competitor, another collaborative uh, multi-agent system. So it really needs to make a decision on there's an opponent coming from behind and there's a curve in front of me. Should I move fast or should I slow down? So we actually put the LiDAR a bit tilted to provide maximum coverage. And so people can, they're going to get access to this, this it's, and then more complexity. It's going to be a whole other season of people with obstacles on the tracks. Mm -hmm. What does this look like going forward? I mean, more sensors, like what, how, how have things changed and surprised you um, in setting this program up? Um, and, and where do you see this going? Yes, yes. Actually, in the platform, you will see that um, in the console, you'll, you'll see that you're going to be learning how to, 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 to race against another car by having a kind of a very nasty racer. <laughs> so you're really training to be um, uh, really well in the real uh, world. However, we are going to provide um, opportunity for people to pick their levels. So you can adjust the bot car that you're racing towards, which we call bot car, and you will see different versions of it coming. Some of them will be changing lanes and some of them maybe try to block you. So over the course of the year, you will see that uh, you, you will see this varying levels of opponents that you will be racing against and to get ready for the next challenge. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Lika, for sharing with us this new version, the Deep Racer Evo, and we'll see you at reInvent. Thank you. Thank you for having me.